Welcome to this career ready webinar on addressing key selection criteria. Key selection criteria are a key component of many job applications but are often perceived as quite challenging to prepare. This workshop will cover uh, some of the types of key selection criteria questions together with an outline of the, the STAR model to guide you in developing your responses uh, using evidence and specific examples. Firstly, a little bit about uh, our service here in careers. Uh, we can offer assistance with careers and employment advice, for example, uh, a consultation appointments of 30 minutes to explore career options and so forth. We can offer you with, uh, support on uh, your job application documents, for example, cover letters, key selection criteria, uh, resumes and preparing for interviews as well. Um, we do encourage students to engage with the Big Interview, which is an online tool where you can film yourself uh, being interviewed. Um, also to access uh, Career Hub, which is like a portal, I guess, to the Careers Service at La Trobe University, where we list uh, a number of events, workshops um, and other uh, careers events. Uh, you can book appointments and you can access a job board that is up there when uh, employers actually list positions. It is usually posted on Career Hub. Um, in Bandura, there are a couple of tiers of service. You can drop by Career Ready for a, uh, basic advice. You can book a 15 minute appointment or you can uh, book, a, as mentioned, a 30 minute careers consultation. Um, I will talk about um, Career Ready Advantage at the end of this presentation, um, but I would certainly suggest if you are a regional student though, to check with your campus as to um, the service offerings and the times because then they may um, actually differ. Okay, so what are, what are selection criteria? So selection criteria are really skills and attributes and ex experience and qualifications that an employer identifies as being the requirements to perform a job. Usually they are required by government or public sector organisations, the tertiary sector, health, nursing, and, um, and occasionally in larger private um, sector organisations. If you are ever in any doubt as to whether a position is requiring key selection criteria, I do suggest that you uh, contact the uh, further inquiries email that is often in um, advertisements um, or phone contact um, where you might seek some clarification. Some common key selection criteria. Um, typically they might uh, relate to your communication skills, your problem solving, your organisational skills, team skills um, and so, so forth. We've put some key ones up there so they're fairly standard. Um, but across some industry sectors, particularly say allied health um, and education, they will find, you will find that they have their own and they're generally specific around key skills for working in that industry. I've got an example particularly for education and allied, allied health uh, as to typical key selection um, areas. Um, so for example, curriculum knowledge, um, responding to student learning needs, um, using data to inform teaching practice, um, collaborative relationship, collaborative relationships and reflective practice are some of the key ones for education. Um, for allied health, you might find that they focus around, um, say, patient-centered care, um, experience in family centre practice or working within multidisciplinary or transdisciplinary teams, just to name a few. So again, you might find those specifics depending on the industry sector. I guess in formulating your responses, um, before anything, read the advertisement for instructions. So how they actually uh, wish for key selection criteria to be addressed. Uh, it's usually in a separate document. Uh, it may also be requested in a cover letter format or a template, et cetera. And, and as mentioned, please check if, if there is any uh, doubt as to how they and that document needs to be prepared or those responses need to be prepared. Um, whatever your, I guess, format is, you would need ideally to have um, the uh, particular questions or um, written out exactly as they appear. Um, if it's a separate document, ensure that you have your name on each page. Um, potentially, um, your document may be um, put in front of a panel, uh, a round table type of situation, and they're printing these documents out. So do have page numbers on there. It is quite important. Uh, specify the job that, uh, to which the criteria relate to, including any reference number. Um, and as I said, mention each uh, 
uh, write out each criteria exactly as it appears. And again, please uh, be encouraged to contact the organisation uh, if you do have any doubts over the format. In writing your responses, check for word limits. So if none are mentioned, keep your responses to typically a third to two thirds of a page. I guess a rule of thumb is often that the, the, the more criteria, the shorter your response will be. Use a similar formatting and font style to your other documents. So if you're using Times New Roman or for your resume, use that in your um, colleague selection criteria so your documents have the same look and feel. Um, Typically, in terms of word limits, just back on that, um, the government sector criteria, generally 250 words would be more of, a, I guess, a typical length. Um, so the first thing to start your questions off with is, as mentioned, just to write the uh, question out um, and have your details written in either a paragraph form or you could put some point, form, uh, point format to respond. I guess just in your preparation though, the first thing you would need to do is understand the criteria. So really reading the questions first, perhaps highlighting some of the key terms or phrases, um, but you're taking note particularly of whether the criteria is essential or desirable. Uh, essential is mandatory, desirable is optional, but um, we do suggest that where possible that you uh, try and have a, a, an attempt at, at um, responding to desirable criteria. If you do not have specific experience against these points, um, show knowledge. Um, so we always show knowledge uh, in absence of, of experience. So keywords and language and phrases will also vary um, and watch these. So anything that talks about knowledge of um, and demonstrated experience, they are different terms. Demonstrated experience is exactly that. Uh, where have you demonstrated experience? Knowledge of may indicate that you really don't necessarily need to have the experience, but you but you are showing your knowledge. So it really does influence how you actually respond. So the first thing I'd suggest you do is include an opening so that your opening sentence that states your claim to that particular criteria. So for example, if it's strong demonstrated written communication skills, uh, you might acknowledge that statement just with one sentence perhaps paraphrasing the uh, question to agree or you know, state that you do have those skills. So your response might start with, I possess strong written communication skills, which I have developed over the course of my career. Okay, you'll also want, uh, in part of your preparation, brainstorms for specific examples. So identify experiences that you've had that will demonstrate your skills and experience. So choose the strongest example usually but not always that might be the recent, the most recent. Um, but think about how long you have um, had that experience for and something they've actually completed uh, with usually a positive outcome. Use examples not just from say work uh, experience, so it could be part-time work, it could be internships, extracurricular experiences, volunteer work, paid work, uh, international placement. So really call upon your range of experience as a student to um, illustrate against the criteria point. I put a template up here for brainstorming. So I guess this is where you might start to map out or plan what your examples might be against the particular criteria points. Uh, so using, you know, whether that's your course, placements, employment, etc. Against down the side, we've listed some, um, some criteria points there. So think about that and map, start to, to map out what you might use against what particular example. We suggest that you should always be using a STAR structure. That is the structure that's used in behavioural interviewing. Uh, it basically is uh, the premises that you giving evidence or an example of something you've completed in the past as your, as, as your response. So you will step the reader through the different stages of that response um, as I guess a compelling piece of evidence. So it's important that you are using the correct language, not I would, but what you've actually done. So you would structure it with a situation, so setting the context, so just briefly describing the situation you were involved in, which developed the skill. So it's really the when and the where, it's some contextual information for the reader so that your action and result will actually make sense. Um, your task is what the role was, the problem that needed to be solved, uh, to be solved, and the action is the, I guess, probably key part of your response. So up to that 75% of your response could focus on the action. So it's the what you did and how you did it. So your role in the tasks. So think about what you actually did. 
and communicate that rather than what you would do. So there is a difference. So the result and outcome is, I guess, as a result of your action, what actually happened. So again, this might vary according to the context that you're, you are in. For allied health, I like to see particularly uh, results that, that might um, focus around patient care or the outcome for a patient. Um, so with education, now often we find that the outcomes might result with, well, what did that affect in the learner? So think about um, what that result might be. So just an example of the STAR in action. So during your time, doing your time at ABC organisation, um, setting up what the position was, the task is what the task, what needed to be done. So there was an event that was involved here, an event booking, um, and scheduling equipment, and just some indication of a problem. Um, then the action fortunately developed a backup plan. So talk about what you actually did um, and step the, step the reader through that and what happened as a result. So as a result, um, this is a positive result as you want to uh, include in your responses, what happened, um, the event was able to proceed. Um, so that's, I guess, a very basic structure. I probably would have put a little bit more information on the action, but at least I do get a sense of what they actually uh, did. So in checking your responses, have you been honest in your responses? Um, have you used positive and specific language? So words such as some or a little or limited or I would do or somewhat um, can dilute or they can weaken the strength of your uh, response. Have you used strong action or doing words? So avoiding passive language. So write similarly to I received consistently positive feedback in relation to this newsletter. So though this, the language is important. So have you addressed all aspects of that particular criteria point? So some criteria points actually have, I guess, multiple things that they might be trying to assess. So there might be a question that is loaded with uh, problem solving skills or team skills together in the one response. So do go back and check to make sure that you're not just focusing on one of those, uh, one aspect of the criteria points. Um, to paid attention, pay attention to the language and the criteria. So well developed, as I've mentioned, is different to knowledge of. Okay, so think about what the question is actually asking for, or whether that's asking for demonstrated experience. Um, above all, also please check your document for spelling and grammar, as we advise with all of your uh, job application documentation. It is important uh, that you do check. Uh, because they say much more than your ability to spell and your command of grammar. They actually uh, do, they do give a, an indication of your attention to detail and your ability to check your work. So vary the examples you've used against the criteria. So perhaps just don't focus on one example. Think of, say, another situation, as I said, call upon your university experiences or volunteer work, part-time work. So use a range of experiences, but just choose what you feel is your strongest. Um, Make sure that you've obviously written the criteria statements um, in the, the as in the position description and in the same order. Okay, so just to finish up, just some information on Career Ready Advantage Award, which is our employability program. This was developed in conjunction with some research done some years ago regarding what grad, uh, what employers were actually looking for in graduates. But we designed a program where you undertake activities against th three key uh, areas of learning. So professional learning, so skills uh, such as um, you know, or courses such as LinkedIn Learning um, around, across a range of topics. Maybe you do some uh, other study outside of university that builds your skills. Uh, practical experience, exactly as it sounds. So it might be your part-time experience um, completed whilst at university. They'll volunteer or a range of other uh, activities. Um, Career portfolio is really where we have um, or activities designed to um, strengthen your ability to communicate your skills and experience to employers through a range of different activities, including producing a LinkedIn, uh, handling a job interview, or writing a resume. I would suggest go and check on the LMS where there is a, de a detailed list of all the activities that you can undertake against all of the components of the award. You work towards a silver first, uh, complete some additional activities to achieve gold, and then um, some more to achieve platinum. Uploading as you go, evidence uh, and a, um, a form for us to assess. Um, this particular uh, webinar would count as one uh, professional learning activity added to your award um, by recording um, attendance or some, uh, some evidence that you've uh, 
attended the webinar. Um, with a career portfolio, uh, a job application uh, is also a particular um, criteria point or an activity point as well. So again, please um, be encouraged to engage with this program. It is building your skills to enable you to be more competitive as a graduate and to undertake some additional activities that um, some of your peers may not have um, undertaken. So thank you for um, listening to this webinar. I hope that that has been useful. Please um, be encouraged to seek further assistance um, should you require on any aspect of um, your job application documents or careers uh, support um, from your local careers team uh, at La Trobe University. Thank you.